Hello everybody and welcome to our QVM marketing planning series and uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Madeline Ross, QVM Trader Connect Program Manager and once again uh, we've got Peter Topping, SBMS mentor and expert in online marketing um, to help us through today's session. So Peter, welcome and um, take it away. Right, so I'll start by just taking over the screen and getting started straight away. We've got to smash through about a, a sort of postgraduate uh, degrees level worth of content in 45 minutes, but we shall uh, we shall get there. So, ooh. okay, so um, first of all, thanks again to Madeline for um, for inviting me and have, have given me the opportunity to talk. Uh, Generally, where I've started is is how to get more out of the QVM Traders Bulletin in May, and um, obviously in May there's the there's the Shop the City, which is a big winter program, and it's not until June the fifth, so third to the fifth. So there's plenty of opportunity to get involved. There's plenty of opportunity to find uh, reasons to repost the event um, in your in your social media, and I would urge you to do that. Obviously. The more people we get to the market, the better it is for everyone. And uh, and most people have got something who are involved that they actually want to sell, which is not not just food and consumables. So it is a great opportunity. The other one, obviously, the Dizzy Deals is still running. Um, and, uh, and the most important one that's most temporarily present is Mother's Day, right? There's millions of people out there looking for a last minute Mother's Day present. It's not till Sunday. And you should be involved in Mother's Day anyway. You, everyone should have something to say about Mother's Day, um, no matter how tangential. So if you're just looking for a little bit of content um, to go out there, then Mother's Day and obviously Shop the City are, uh, are, are the two great ones to, to, to work for. If you've got product that you're trying to move, then obviously the Dizzy Deals is still working. But it, it was a pretty much a run of the mill trader bulletin this, uh, this, this particular month. And uh, but there was still actually some really good content in there for us to use. And there was, you know, if we only do a post a week, there was two posts done for that particular month already with Mother's Day and Shop the City. So plenty of content in there um, uh, if if you look for it. And uh, I'd encourage you each time to do that and obviously to practice using the hashtags that we've talked about, which are the ones for the QVM and the ones for the city. There's lots and lots of effort being made to re-engage people in the market and also to um, to bring people back to the city. So, uh, you know, go for it. And we are seeing the arrival of international students and some tourists, especially now the footies on. I've started to see those scarfs wandering around the market and, uh, you know, through the city on a Friday and Saturday afternoon. So the people are here. Let's get them. OK, so. Uh, there was a few other bits and pieces that are in there, such as the sustainability tours. Um, you know, and again, if your products are tall, environmentally sound, or you've got some interest in environmental credentials, then that's a great thing to, uh, you know, to be able to, to, to leverage. So um, that was really all I wanted to say um, about, about that. Obviously, yes, it was the thing I meant to say. It, it obviously is the end of the Islamic celebration. You would have seen people during the week this week out and about if you lived in the inner city or you lived in the inner west and they were all celebrating the um the, the end of end of ramadan so we'll expect to see a bit more traffic in the market if there's some relevance to you in that particular um in in that particular area so i meant to mention that further further up the um up the list so i've rushed through that a little bit because there's so much to get through when we talk about the anatomy of a good web page but in summary, read the Trader Bulletin, find some posts, reuse the posts, and get yourself strategically in alignment with what they're trying to promote. So there are millions of results about what's a good web page and what's not a good web page, but it's never really changed. Google wants the same things that your client wants, and it wants structure, content, organization, preferably some links, and the ability to get around your website. Now, you can turn that into reams and reams of content, but it's it's not that complicated. Uh, but a lot of people make a living out of making it really complicated. Is your site well structured? Has it got good content? And is, is the links in the site good internally and externally? Can I get around? 
So a classic example of making it really common is this latest one that I saw, which was Maslow's hierarchy of needs turned into uh, an SEO action item. So there's lots of things in there as a small business trader you can and can't do, right? And I'm going to talk a lot about the very top end here, about improving competitiveness. Because obviously, if Google can't crawl your website, then you're not even, you know, you're not on the web. So, you know, you're not selling anything. So I'm going to talk about the stuff at the top here, which makes you competitive, because it's, that is all things that you have control over. And it is something that can make a real difference to whether you get the click through and whether you actually get your chance to lose the client. So um, when you look at it, try and just get a few takeaways from your uh, from, from any article that you read. And if it looks too complicated, it probably is too complicated. And just try and simplify things. When I looked at it all, there were so many articles based on top four best practices, 14 best practices, 25 things you must do on your on your web page. There was loads and loads of them. What I did is I just cherry picked a dozen or so. Okay. And I'll go through the 14 and you can effectively bail out from the from the talk after that and just work on those 14 if you want to. But it's just really my version or my summary of what I think is probably important. So number one, make sure your URLs aren't too long, three to five words. Okay, because they won't fit on a mobile phone screen, and the client won't read them. When you've got a page title, and Madeline and I already argued about this today, 55 to 65 characters. Okay, because if it's too long, people won't be able to see it. An H1 tag, every page needs an H1 tag, and I'm going to go into those, and the use of subheadings, right? Everyone wants a subheading. What's the page about, and what are the key items on the page? No one really reads the internet, they scan it, right? So we look for the title, and then we go down and look for the bold bits, right? And we look at the pictures. That That's really how the brain works. Then we talk about the meta description, and that's our bit of, you know, that's our... Uh, that's where we're supposed to sell the sizzle and not the sausage. And then, you know, you need some sound and movement on your page. Okay, all the research shows that uh, if there's images, if there's uh, graphs, if there's charts, if there's gifts, it increases people's engagement. Okay. So my other four, my other seven or eight things that I was going to talk about is make sure your images are optimized. And there's two reasons to optimize them. One is Google can't read images. Two, it helps people with who are disabled have access to the internet because they're, all the disability tools read them. And probably most importantly is Alexa and things like that. With semantic search, Google will read out and also read the content that's on the site. So when someone says, Google, find me a Mother's Day gift, right? it will look at all the pages and all the title tags and things like that about Mother's Day gifts. When it finds a page, it will read down through those images, right? So if your image is called Mother's Day gift ideas or Mother's Day gift chocolate box or Mother's Day furry socks, then it will read that, okay? It's called semantic search. So it's a really good reason to optimize the images of your products. Lastly, external links. Google likes to know you're connected, okay? On top of all that, the next things you get to are writing good content, as in the body, and having being relevant to the topic, how quickly your page loads, whether you're connected to social media, have you written enough words on the topic, and is your site good on mobile? In a previous session, I gave you a testing tool for mobile. Go there and test your page if you're not sure. In terms of word content, if you've got a lot of product, this is the one that takes the most effort. It's actually finding something to write about each product. And Google likes a couple of hundred words. It'll make a difference. Having a good photo is really important. Having good price is really important. Having an easy checkout is really important. But if you want to rank, have a little bit of text. right? And we're talking about five or six lines here. We're talking about a few hundred words and it's the hardest thing to do when you've got a lot of product but it's worth the effort because it's going to be dozens and dozens of 
of key rings out there. There's going to be dozens and dozens of pairs of socks out there. There's going to be dozens and dozens of hats out there. There's going to be coats. There's going to be jumpers. So if you're all using Shopify, you've all optimized your images. You've all got a good page title and a good URL. The one that's going to come up higher up is the one that loads fastest, has the most recommendations and has a bit of text, right? That's all going to come down to one percenters. And if there's 10 sites and the first ones are Kmart, Target, um, you know, uh, Maya, et cetera, et cetera, then you're competing for the other six spots on the page. And it's all the one percenters that will make a difference. So that was just a sort of a, a quick summary of what things on the page or around the page that will make your SEO good, right? But before we even get to the web page, if you're starting a new site, you get the chance to plan it. And if you're reviewing your site, you get a chance to plan it, right? And again, it's going to go back to doing things really, really simply. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a funnel. Here's our brand. Here's our, the categories that we've got. And here's the products. Please buy something. Get to the checkout, right? It's no more simple than that. We're not trying to do anything really special. We're just trying to get people to come to the store, find a product and buy something. And it's called creating a funnel. So websites can get very, very complicated and just take it down to three things. The home page, the categories or collections and individual product pages, right? Anything else is a nice to have. The only one thing I'd add is to make sure that people can find you. So you've got to find somewhere on the site where they can phone you, email you, get to you on social media, get your location. And, you know, and if that's a contact us page, that's a contact us page. But if it's a, in the footer, it's in the footer. If it's in the sidebar, it's in the sidebar. It's just, you know, can they track you down? But what you're really looking at is three things, a home page, collections and categories and a product page. That's it. And then I took this from a uh, a site about blogs and I just did it because I think it just makes things nice and simple. It shows where the traffic goes and also it shows you what, how that a website, even with a lot of products, shouldn't be any more complicated than this. So in this particular case, the posts are the products. The posts are the badges, the CDs, the records, the books, the maps, you know, the socks, whatever they are. They are the posts are the individual products, right? And they all belong in a group, right? And the groups can be split into two, two things, right? So the main topics can be men's wear, women's wear, you know, kids wear. They can be vinyl, CDs, and cassettes. They can be music memorabilia, you know, whatever you want to call them. And then you've got the subtopics and you've got the individual products. Lots of people have only got three layers if you've got a small product. And you can see where the traffic goes up and down. When we do a funnel, People come in, they go all the way down. They, we're looking at getting them to the bottom. Sometimes they go up and down in the bottom layers between the two different layers. But try and keep your things simple. Right? Anything else beyond this is a bit superfluous. Right? Your blogs and all your other stuff. We're here to sell something. Homepage, categories, products. That's what we're really looking at. So if we've got all of that right and we've got our site set up, don't fall at the first hurdle. Right? And the first hurdle is the search results. When you search for something in Google or you search for something in another search engine, you generally get a result that looks like this. Okay. It's got a URL, it's got a title, and it's got some chat, some guff, right? Now, this is where you get to sell what your page is about. This is where you get the chance to actually get the client to engage. And you've got control over all the information that appears there, right? This is the page title, this is the URL, and this is the meta tag. Okay, and people don't give it enough attention. So what I'll do, I just broke it down then before I got to the slide, right? But it's a really simple piece of content that, um, that, that we can all manage and that is all managed generally through our shopping systems. So the first thing is the title tag. And this is the most important thing that Google looks at. The second thing is the URL, right? 
and that tells people and also Google what your what's on the page. And then the description is the natural language and the key phrases that uh, that you want to get across to encourage people to to click on your page. So this is your opportunity for your call to action. Right. And whether that's locally made uh, natural product, all organic, whether it's based on price, whether it's based on scarcity, what do you want? What are you selling and what do you want people to do? Right. This is that's that's our chance to say more than Ugg boots online. Right. What kind of Ugg boots are they? Who do they suit? What's different about them? Where are you? You know, that this is that's where we get to do our sales pitch. So if I go back a page, this is our listing in the old yellow pages, right? This is our listing in the old white pages. This is our listing in the old Thompson's directory. This is where we get to say who we are, where we are and what we're selling. Yeah, who we are is the URL, what we are and what we're selling. That's really what we're what we're doing, right? And if you don't control this, Google looks at your site and so does Amazon and so do all the others and Etsy and they make their own decisions about what to put in here. And that depends on what the engineering of your site's like. So you don't want to say in here, no refunds, because if it picks that up as the first piece of text in your structure, it'll say a simple guide to blah, 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 no refunds, you know, privacy, blah, blah, blah. It'll just pick something. So make sure it doesn't pick rubbish. So title tags. Title tags are not more than 55 characters, or if you're Madeline, 65 characters, right? And uh, But what we're really trying to say between us there is don't make it too long, okay? Um, and the descriptions, I put 155 characters, but they will go to 160 or 180 in certain cases. If you go over, you'll end up with dot, 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 dot in the middle of a sentence, and you're just wasting your time. Okay, if it's too long, they also reserve the right to pick some other content from the page. Google absolutely says if it's more than 185 characters, they reserve the right to pick some other content in the page. So it'll just ignore all your hard work. Yep. So these are the three things that we can control. Okay. And what we're trying to do, say is keep it short, keep it snappy and keep it to the point and keep it around the key phrases that you're that you're really trying to push. Okay, so with the URL, most content management systems allow you to edit the URL and they allow you to edit the bit of the URL after the slash. Okay, so you can write whatever you want to do in there, but keep it short and keep it targeted to a key phrase and if possible, use no numbers. And as Madeline pointed out to me, I said, don't use any numbers. And then I used an example, which has got two numbers in it, 17 and 21. So therefore, I am um, I'm not practicing what I preached and I've chosen a bad example. But um, it was uh, it, it's, uh, again, one of those things that's really easy to do and, and, and uh, easy to say, but not so easy to do. And sometimes you do have to use numbers. But just, you know, the, the rule is try not to use too many of them. So Whatever we add to the URL, we want to keep it short and we want to keep it really descriptive. And the other thing that I've said time and time again in these talks is don't use a year because we want to reuse our pages. We don't want to say Anzac Day Sale 2022. We don't want to say Easter 2022. We don't want to say Christmas 2022 in the URL because we want to use it again next year. All right. If you want to put the date in, we'll put that into the page content. We'll put that into the meta description. Don't put it into the URL. So where do they all go? Right? They basically go into your Shopify site. If you really want to know the details about where they go, then they go between the head tags. Right? So, um, you know, and I'll Peter, show you. Peter, can I, uh, we have a question. Can you change yeah. the URLs? If you've already changed publish the page and you change the URL, you'll have lots of broken links on the internet. So unless and, and the you, only way that you can fix that is to have a, a redirect from yeah. the previous page to to this page. Yeah, gets a bit messy unless you're on WordPress and you've got a plug in. But yeah, it gets a bit messy. 
Yeah, don't do it is my is yeah. my advice. Right? Just don't change the URLs, right? Start fresh and start writing good ones when you when you start again. You've got some key phrases that you that we want to use. Um, you know, uh, if we want to use best sterling silver giftware, then, you know, let's start using sterling silver, let's start using silver giftware. Let's keep our key phrases uh, together and start to put them into our um, into our uh, in, into our new web pages, right? The controversy about the title tag is whether you should include your brand name or not. Um, my argument there is big brands don't because they often know you're already on their store, and if you've got a really really long name, then you're going to use up your tight your your allowance really quickly. So if your company is called hard to find, or it's called um, suburban blinds, you're not going to end up with many spaces to write anything about the product in your title tag if you use your brand name. So use it on your homepage, use it on your uh, on your about us page, but sometimes on the product page, go for go for content over you know your brand name, you don't need to use it all the time. The customer knows that you're there. So just coming back to the, to the URL again, sometimes in some of the systems, the URL is called the slug. Okay. And that's where you'll see it. It says you can edit the slug. And what they mean is the bit in red after Kmart, after product, you can edit this bit. Okay. So that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. All right. My only advice is use dashes, not underscores. And the reason for that is that, underscores have a different meaning in in seo so often they mean it's a single word or a phrase whereas if you use dashes then they're single words so um you can edit them a lot of people don't i would urge you to start experimenting with uh, with editing them and try and keep them similar to what you've used in the title tag because you're trying to tell google this is my brand this is what this page is going to be about Here's the URL, it's relevant. And then we're going to talk about page content next, right? So you can edit all of these in uh, Wix, in WordPress, by using Yoast or All-in-One Premium. You can edit them in Shopify. It's an easy thing to do. If you're not confident, don't do it, right? Don't bother, right? Focus on the title tags, focus on the content, focus on the product, and leave this until a time in the future where, you're, where, where, where you feel confidence to do it. It's not a must-have right when you're starting out it's a thing that will make your product better as you become a more sophisticated user right so i brought it up again because it's sometimes called the slug rather than the url so if you're in there and especially if you're one of the mentors and someone says should i edit my slugs what they mean is the end part of the url okay and if you're in a content system and it says you've got an error with the slug then it, they're talking about the red bit You've done something in here. You've put in an ampersand. You've put in an exclamation mark. You've put in something it doesn't like. You've done a hash in there. It's got, you know, and it'll tell you there's a problem with the slug. That's what they're talking about. Um, so question is, so you can edit that last bit. And we're talking about on a Shopify store. Yeah, or a WordPress store or a Wix store yeah. on the page. When you go to the page, you can edit the slug and you can edit the title tag. Now, the other thing you can also edit in most of them is the meta description. And if you search, are oh, meta descriptions important, you're going to get the answer which people says, oh, Google doesn't give any weight to them. Right? Oh, Google doesn't rank them. They're not important in ranking. And it isn't important to Google and Google doesn't do they don't. They, it's the keyword category. They don't they don't give it any any relevance these days. Right? But it's very, very important to the consumer because it's your chance to tell the consumer who you are, what you are, and what's on the page, right? So if we go back to the screen, the meta tag is how you appear compared to the, to the competitors. This meta description is here. So Google doesn't give it any weight, right? They're saying at the moment we don't give it much weight, but the consumer, who's the viewer, does. So this is where you get to talk about the product. So 
about 155 to 185 characters, including white space. Try not to use any symbols in there because they've got programming implications, right? It basically just says what's on the page. Why should the person go to that page, right? In winter 2022, Ugg boots are the best value gift that you can you can buy, mum, you know, your daughter, your your grandpa, whatever, blah blah blah. Best Australian made Ugg boots, kangaroo leather, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We've just done a whole load with one of the market guys at the moment. So what is it you're selling? What's the value? What what's the what's the call to action? Do you want to click through? Do you want to buy? Do you want to view? Is it scarcity? Is it a sale? Is it price driven? This is your chance to talk about it right here, right? In 185 characters. So, you know, big markets, best Ugg boots, you know, season clearance, plan, you know, products from one, from $55 to $99, calf and ankle included, you know, it, you've got, you've got a lot of space there. You've got a lot of real estate, use it. It's one of the best parts of, of, of the whole system. It's where you talk about the sausage and try and add the sizzle, you know, to use an overused expression. Um, so we're moving on from that to the actual page itself. So the three things that I've talked about really is the very top title, the URL itself, and then the meta description. That's hurdle number one. Once the client has actually clicked through, right, or Google's followed that, then we've got actually got to the page. So we've got a nice site. It's well organized. It's got a home page. It's got categories. It's got products. The products have got the right URL. We've got a good title. We've got to write the meta description. We get to the page, right? And the easiest way to think about this is Google is like a really, really, really daggy English teacher, right? What she's going to do or he's going to do or a science teacher is they're going to look at your assignment and they're going to give you all the marks for structure first, right? And then they're going to look at the content. If you weren't very good at English like me, then you just get all your marks by having the structure. Do you have the right title? Do you have subheadings? Do you have paragraphs? Are you using full stops? You know, do all of that kind of stuff. Is there the, is, is the conclusions? Is there recommendations, right? Google wants to know that the page is well structured. And the thing that will tell it whether it's much well structured is the use of these things called H1s. Right. So I get to the to the page and is there a main title to the page? Right. And Google looks at that because it says heading number one. The next thing it says, is there only one on the page? Right. So that that tells Google what the page should be about. When it looks at the H1 title, it looks at the URL and it looks at the page, the title tag, and then it looks at the rest, the rest of the rest of the content to make sure that it's relevant. So it looks at the alt tag, looks at all the text that you've written about and sees just does a relevance check. And there right. really should only be one H tag on a page. It has to be one. If there's two, they'll punish you. Yeah. They'll take a mark off the ranking. Mm. Okay. Then just like a high school assignment, they'll say, okay, are there any subtopics? Are there any sub issues? Right. And those sub issues are called H2, H3 and H4. OK, that's what it's really looking for. So we're looking for we're, we're, we're looking at a um, at pet store and we're looking at dogs. Right. And then we're looking at the, the subtopics on that are leads, puppy feeders, dog, blan uh, dog blankets, um, vitamins and minerals. You know, those are all our subtopics. And then we get into those vitamins and minerals and, and, uh, and medicines. And it's going to say dog teeth, doggy breath, you know, all of the kind of individual products that, that we sell that, that can be on that category page. Right? That's just looking for structure. The other way we tell Google what's important is we use bold and italics. Don't overuse them. So if you want to draw Google's attention to a phrase, then put it in bold or italics. So it should only be used as part of your keyword phrase that on there. And it will just, it tells Google, have a look at this phrase. And then what it does in the algorithm is it runs a back check, right? It goes, oh, they've got this phrase on here. And it goes back up through the page and sees whether it's relevant or not. 
right? It particularly likes it if it's a call to action. So it's a subscribe, book, buy now, you know, it's got something to do with an activity that will satisfy a question or a demand put into a search query, right? So how to stuff does it all the time. How do I, you know, get, you know, bird poo off my, off, off my metallic paint, right? It, it's a, it's a, if you're selling a product that you spray on the side of your car and it gets rid of, you know, possum poo or bird poo, then you can use the bold section and the italic section when there's an action item there that relates to a product that you can buy or some actions that you can take. Google would love that. So use it sparingly. So Google is really looking for what's my assignment about? Are there any subheadings? And then is there some additional footers and things like that down the bottom? And the H4 is a kind of like references. So the other question that things that you need on the page are links, right? There are two types of links, internal links and external links. Can you, uh, I do have a question. Um, external links, what are they? I guess that uh, uh, you can explain the point of having external links and what sort of, uh, of links external links are. Okay, so first of all, my main thing is don't overthink it. Lots and lots of people get calls from people saying you don't have enough links on your site and we'll create backlinks for you and you know just pay us $500 a month and all of this kind of nonsense that goes on all the time, right? Don't overthink the links. Internal links are the most important, right? So if I'm on a page about pet food, how do I get back to or get links to other products that are that are in my website without going all the way back to the home page? Google wants to know you've got links to other things, right? So it likes internal links to your site that are relevant, especially if you've got a doggy wash product and then you've got a how-to page, wash your dog, right? Absolutely loves that. That's absolutely gold. If on the how to wash your dog page, you've got links back to doggy products like, you know, um, foam, cleaning, towels and things like that, it absolutely loves that because it's creating a circular environment. If you're in the women's giftware section and you've got links to a collections page, which is Mother's Day or Christmas gifts for mum or, or, or gift ideas for women, right? Then Google loves that. So those are the internal links that I'm talking about, right? Google, they're the most important ones. In terms of outbound links, Google wants to know you're connected to social media, right? doesn't matter what you've got on the page it doesn't read it it just goes there and goes oh yeah you've got one and if you've got followers it likes it if you've got recommendations it likes it more but it's not going to read all your posts which is like three for one coffee at you know at um you know lord of the blah 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 such or get a free muffin it's not going to read any of the content it's going to say there's a facebook page here it's a business page it's got a lot of visitors it's got recommendations. I like it. Right? It's got a Twitter page. It's got some followers. It's not going to read the content. Right? So it wants to know that you're linked to that. If you're linked to an industry association, it loves that. If you've got IATA on the bottom, right, or Cato or one of those organizations, and you link to their homepage, you are secondary brand leveraging. You're saying, I'm, a, I'm related to a major organization that's to do with the trade that's reputable. Okay, so those are the kind of outbound links that you've got. And if you've got a mention in the media and you've got a link to that, it also likes that. Um, yes, and, and one of the things um, that, that, that uh, will be helpful as well is if you link to the QVM website. Absolutely. As part of the QVM uh, and, and, you know, the traffic to QVM is enormous. So you can link... Uh, to the QVM website. You can link it to your own uh, listing at, uh, on QVM. Yeah. So I don't know what the rules are around using the logo in your footer. Well, okay. they don't particularly want you to use the QVM logo uh, on the website, but they definitely would like a, a link back to the website. A text link. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that text link would be gold, right? Yeah. Anything right. you can remember of like that is um, is 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 gold. 
So those are those are links out of the site that will help you establish the fact that you're an entity and you live somewhere and that you're connected to the trade. Right? Those are all all good things that, that you can do. In terms of inbound links, they're really links from directories and links from media and links from uh, social media that land on your site. They're really difficult to get. As many as you can get is really good. Right? If you can get reviewed in product.com, you can um, you can get reviewed in uh, you know Mamma Mia. You can get reviewed on a, 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 on a, a you know a, on a school back to school Facebook page. If you can get reviewed on a you know on, on an aged care site for your product. Um, if you've uh, you know it, there's a there's lots and lots of places where you can get linked. That gives you credibility with Google. But I would say don't sweat it. You know. You've got a link from the Vic Market already. If you've got some other links, that's great. But focus more on having some internal links in your site, right? And obviously, with Dorita, her links are to do internally are more easy because she's got lots of collections. So if she's got a product in a collection, she can link back to that collection. And because she's got collections, they all have links out to products, right? So that that's a way of creating those particular links. If you've got a how to or you've got a blog or you've posted on social media on how to do something or how to solve a problem or spot removal or a recipe or a book collection or an author, then yeah, put that link on there. They like the links, but don't over sweat the links. In terms of writing content, again, it's something that causes people to be to procrastinate. OK, keep it short. Use bullet points, use subheadings, and don't overuse your keyword phrases because it just looks wrong and bad. If it's difficult for someone to read, it's difficult for someone to read, right? Try and keep it to natural language, right? So keep it short. Make sure you use subheadings. If you've got a keyword phrase like giftware, gift shop, Mother's Day, weekend, Anzac Day sale, winter clearance, um, you know, if you've got a term that you want to use, a couple of times is good. Yep. If you've got an image, use it. Google likes color and movement, charts, diagrams, gifts, videos. Just make sure they're tagged up. Where there's a little bit of gold is that Google likes an expert quote. Right? If you've got a review, you've got a, it's been featured, anything like that, that will really help it. Put the link on there. If you've got a link, put it on there, use it, right? And it likes a call to action. So Google's always looking for a call to action. What's this page about? They say they're a store. They say they sell something. They offer a product. Is it a product? Is it a service? Oh, it's a service. Okay. If it's a service, is it mentioned? It goes through and looks down the page for some action. Right? Where's the action item? Where's the call to action? Buy, purchase, check out, you know, it wants to do that and it loves it if it's in text. All right? So those are the, just the simple tips. The last thing it wants to see on a page really that I'm probably going to go to in any detail before I show you some examples is navigation. All right? It wants to know that you can get around. And simply that's headers and footers and what they call breadcrumbs, which is just where you are in the URL. Okay? And I'll just I've just cut and pasted a, a, a picture, which I'll which I'll, I'll I'll show you. So, have you got a good header which has your categories in? Do you have a footer, and can you work out where you are from the URLs, right? So, if you take it, <clears throat> and you can see that's not for any brand. I've just taken this off an educational tool. Core pages and services. Log in, contact us. External links. Yep, in the footer. These are all H4s. You know, generally we've got products, men's wear, women's wear, kids wear, winter wear, um, you know, that, that sort of stuff that we've got down the bottom. And then resources, how to, that sort of stuff, our blog. You know, if you've got any resources, put them there separately. So really that's what, that, that, that's what Google means by navigation, right? and what you should have on the page. At any point in the page, I should be able to contact you, right? At any point on the page, I should be able to get out to your social media. 
at any point on the page, I should be able to get down the bottom of the page and, and look at all the categories. That's the simplest way to meet that particular goal, right? Now, Madeline went through a really good example of how it works on Amazon. And uh, Madeline, do you want to talk about that now? And then I'll just go through and show the hard to find one. Or... Yeah, sure. Um, now, now, this is um, just an example. It doesn't matter whether it's Amazon or any other website, but this Amazon one is a, a good example. Um, you know, maybe you want traffic from Google, um, maybe from uh, YouTube. It doesn't really matter. We're looking at the overall principle here. The point is... For an Xbox One USB headset, there are over 4,000 results. So uh, in other words, whether you sell from your website, Amazon or eBay, uh, you need to talk about the competition because you're up against uh, thousands of other businesses. If you're trying to do something online and you've got all this competition um, that you, and, and, uh, and that you're not getting results or something doesn't fit, um, Probably when you think about it and go back to basics, as Peter has shown, it could well be that you've got a huge amount of competition and this term is so competitive. So what can we do to get around this specifically, in this case, for an Xbox One? It's really about in the meta description. You can have a look at the third item down. The first two are, are sponsored. Uh, the third one is, um, is a, um, a product description. Even here you can see the description is very specific. The different products are all targeting something slightly different. So there's a lesson here. It doesn't just apply to Amazon. You need to think about specifics for your product listings and web pages. Can you go to the next slide? So here we're looking at missed opportunities. The first thing to do is start thinking about what might someone use a product for, what type of specific thing they might want. Uh, mind you, all of the headsets sell with all these things, but people out there want to be 100% sure that the USB headset they're going to buy is going to work with their iPad or their PC. They're going to have a specific usage in mind. Uh, they might be looking for specific features uh, like noise handling uh, or over ear or volume control or uh, like me a soft earmuff uh, so your ears don't hurt after some time and it's not so easy to find because not many people target that keyword the ones that mention it are the ones that get the sale if they don't mention it they miss out on getting on the search engine then you have the colors it doesn't matter what you'd be more specific about what colour you're looking for as well. It doesn't matter what business or industry you're in, the same process applies. So, you know, don't miss these opportunities in, in your product descriptions. So I just wanted to have a, a, a quick um, go over there on, on product descriptions. Back to you, Peter. Thanks, Madeline. Um, just to go over that, you'll see... With a lot of those companies that they have the same they have lots and lots of you can sometimes do a search on kogan and you see the same product takes up a whole page the reason is they've written one version of the product for xbox one version of the product for ipad one version of the product for pc one version of the product for mac right and what they've done is they've used the same or a similar image and they've alt tagged it differently they've used a different title they've used a different meta description and they've used a, a different U, a slightly different url to cater for all the markets because it's impossible for them to say works on xbox works on ms works on ipad works on androids whether it's just too competitive right because people who've got a mac search for one for a mac right people who want it for an ipad generally put in ipad um so therefore what they do is they they duplicate the product lots and lots of times but they change the content and the description and maybe they use a different photograph and they use something called a conochial URL in order to um, in order to to get around that. So what I just wanted to do was actually go to uh, an opportunity um, and talk about uh, if I can get to it um, a different screen. So we've got about uh, ten minutes left. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So what I wanted to do briefly was just have a look at 
um, some of the things that I've been talking about in in um, you know in reality. And what I've done is I've gone to a site called Hard to Find because they used to be one of my clients years ago. And you can see they've got a really simple URL, hard to find. This is their title tag. And then they've got a meta description, right? And uh, and I want to show you where this comes to on, on, on the page, right? So if I click through to their home page, I can then work out and look at the engineering of their site by right clicking on the page and viewing the source, right? So when Google looks at a web page, this is what it looks like. It doesn't look at the front. This is what it reads. It reads all this, right? So it doesn't matter really how you think it looks. It's all irrelevant, you know? But this is what it's reading. It's reading the engineering, okay? In this particular case, you can see their title tag, gift shop, unique gifts online Australia, and they've put their brand in there hard to find, right? Where you see that is when you run is when I run my mouse over May Marketing in the top right hand corner, you can see a little thing that pops up. May Marketing QVM, that's the title tag there. So this information, it gets run out on the on the top of those tabs. And it's the most important bit of information that Google starts to look at, right? So we already know that the keywords on this web page are going to be gift shop and unique gifts online Australia. Gifts online Australia, unique gifts, unique gifts online, you know, there's all the combinations and they put their brand name on there, right? Then they've got their meta description. And this is where it is under meta name. Put a smile on your face with your loved ones by getting ideal presents from our gift shop. They've got their key term in there. At hard to find, they've got their brand name in there. Then they've gone back for best and unique gifts. And they've gone for all ages and all occasions, right? So the keywords that they're going to be trading off here are best, unique, and gifts, and gift shop, and ideal presents, and, uh, and and words like that. And they've got them both in the meta description and also in the title tag. So you can see that um, how they've started to structure their page really, really well uh, uh, based on that, right? They've used a thing called OG, which is just a... Uh, which is just a way to really break that out when you get sophisticated, more sophisticated using and you're getting beyond using just a, a normal Shopify or something like that, you can actually go to an extra depth by using these things called OG properties, where where you, you break out your site in more detail and your descriptions in more detail. So what I want to know from this particular page, right, is have they got an H1? And if I want to look for it, I just go control F, I type in H1. And you can see they've got an H1 gift shop. Okay, so Google knows that this page, the most important bit of content on this page is about a gift shop. And the gift shop is related to what's in the meta description, what's in the title tag, and what's in the URL. All right? So Google's happy because right up here in the top where we were, oops, hang on, sorry, it's taken too long doing it that way it's it corresponds to what they're trying to what they're trying to do so they've got their their title tag and that's going to make google happy it's going to say you've told us it was about this and it appears to be about that then it will look for some of the key phrases that are in there have they structured their page properly have they got any subheadings i can just look for h2 <clears throat> yes they have they've got h2 hard to find the brand unique gift ideas and personal gifts right so it's selling google these are the two, these are the next most important sections upon on our site. And you can see again, they're relevant to what they've put up in the title tags. So they've got quite a lot of them. And you can just keep flicking through and it'll always highlight the one that where where the one that you can, you know, where you're up to. We can see if they've got any H3s. Yep, they've got H3s. So this they're telling Google this is the third most important thing to look at in their um in terms of the content on our on our site right so in here it's a lot of how to how can you choose the perfect gift for your gift shop and then it's giving answers right so when people ask questions about alexia this is where it comes this is what it's looking for it'll go h1 h2 h3 then yeah there's some content here would you like something as simple as a coffee mug 
What about gifts for teenagers? They've done it really well. It's a really well structured site. I don't have to use H4s. No, they don't use H4s. So they've taken their homepage down to one, two, and three. And that's how they've done that. They're using H3 to answer questions, how to's, H2s for the two different key areas that they're, or three category areas they're involved in. And the H1 is just to the entrance to their gift shop. So that's how that kind of uh, content works really, really well. And I'll close out of that one if I can move the screen around without closing it. Because it's got really big. Oops. No, let's try it again. It's trying to take me back to a half watch Netflix series. I should have closed that before I started. OK, so um, I'll just open a new tab. If I look at some of their categories, right, and these are all their categories, we can look and see how how well they've done with terms of creating a category. And some of theirs is automated, so that so because they've got so much content, it, they've got a system which automatically creates pages. So it might not be as good as um, the details that we've been talking about. But if we look at hoop earrings, right, we can look at how they've written their URL hard to find categories under jewelry, women's jewelry, and then hoop earrings, right? That's a good, that's a good URL, right? Google will like that. If I look at the title tag over here, if I can get to it, it says hoop earrings, gold, silver, and hoop earrings, hard to find. So they've used their keyword search to specify what kind of hoop earrings that they want to feature in their title tag. So they're probably the ones that they sell the most of. So their title tag is good. Yeah, this is their page tag. When we look at the source, this will be H1. These are all their internal links. And then they've got their product that are here, that's here. And if they've got any how to's, it'll be on here somewhere. Okay, so if I look at the page source by right clicking, I can see the title tag, right? I can see the meta description that's there. And I'll see if they've got an H1. Yeah, hoop earrings is H1. And we'll see what they've used for H2. OK, they've gone to how to. Right? So they're answering questions. How to style a hoop earring? Does the size matter? Is less more? Is it overshaped? So they're answering problems. They've been prepping up. And again, I chose a site because they used to be a client and they're very good at, um, at search. And they're prepping themselves up for semantic search is where people ask Alexia and people like that questions and then they get an answer. They can only get an answer if the content is on the page. So that's how they've started to structure their product. Um, and most companies do the same sort of thing. Um, I looked for men's socks at Kmart the other day. Um, here we go. We can see their URL, we can see the page title, and we can see their short description. If we go to it and we have a look at it, It's just a boring old boring page, right? So if I click on one particular product, they've got their images, the images are alt tagged, they've got an H1 title, they've got recommendations which Google loves, right? And they've got a tiny bit of text, which is what they which they want to have. And it's easy to get back to things in the other categories because they've laid it out. Right? So the navigation is really good. If I want to go back to men's socks, men's socks and underwear, men's clothing, men's, all the way back to home, I can get back. That's what Google calls breadcrumbs. Okay, if we look at the page structure, ooh, it's going to be hard to find, but 
Okay, so if I look at the page structure now, it's going to be really difficult to find your way around this. But you can see here, my first reference to page structure, it says the page, the, the page font for the H1 is in Robo, it's in Helvetica or San Sharif. Those are the dependings on the, on the page that it's on, how big it is, what letter spacing it is. So they've already got a pre-programmed way to create content, the same for H2. So rather than go and look for them, I'm just going to show you the fact that they've thought about that, you know, in terms of their page structure. Um, they've got an H1, they've got an H2, and have they got a meta description? It's easy to find out. Type in the word meta. And... Type the S out, Peter. You've got metas, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So they've got the meta title. What is it? It's active, it's five pack, it's low cut, it's tough, and it's a sports sock, right? So, um, you know, and they're just, with theirs, They've gone to they've gone on the free free delivery Australia wide. Their keywords, the brand. You can just see how they structure it, right? So when when you start to, and there's no point in doing lots and lots of these. I just wanted to show you a little bit of an example of of what I was talking about in terms of in terms of you know what should be on a page, right? And that was really what should be on a page is the navigation elements, and then. Um, a well-structured title, uh, a well-structured URL, a meta description, and then when you get into the actual page itself, um, you know, H1s and H2s in terms of titles, and uh, a, a, and then color and movement. But color and movement that is tagged up properly so that you can, it, it works well for semantic search and works well for disability search. And that's really what Google is looking for on the page. It's no different from what a human is looking for. What's the name of the page? Can I understand where it is? Can I get around when I'm in there? Is it well organized? And is there a call to action? And is the important stuff, you know, clearly laid out? So I, I can make it sound not too complicated, but um, it's much harder to do than it is to talk about. It's much easier for me to talk about. I think that um, one, of the, one of the things that should, uh you know, that people need to take into account is that uh, this is achievable, but it's not a matter of um, um, bogging yourself down and trying to achieve it all in one go. It's a matter of saying, okay, for the next three months, this is my goal, and then start setting um, some, some goals of what you need to do. And maybe that's starting with the meta descriptions and, 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 um, um, and, and title tags, uh, but you know, it's not works through it slowly rather than trying to achieve it all at once. Otherwise, um, you do procrastinate and you say it's all too hard. So I'm not going to give it a go. Yeah, the easiest way around it is to try and think like a librarian and a consumer, right? The librarian wants to know what's the title, where does it belong, is it clear, is it concise, right? And does it that does it have a, a kind of layout, right? So imagine your favorite or your least favorite teacher is looking over your shoulder when you're writing it. And then imagine what the consumer is looking for. No jargon. The consumer is looking for, is it clear what it is? Like, and if you've seen a million pendants, then you're probably a bit jaded. And also you think, yeah, it's a silver pendant. Well, of course it is, because it's actually silver. You can see that from the picture. Write it out. It's a silver drop pendant, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, so often you're blind to the details of your own product because you sell it a lot. Yeah. What is it? What color is it? Who does it fit? Who's the target market? Who's the demographic? And then just imagine Mr. or Mrs. Simmons or whoever it was when you were in high school looking over your shoulder and write it correctly. Is there a title? Is there a subtitle? Is it clear? Is it concise? Is it good English? You know, that's that's the way you've got to do and start with the most important pages or start with the next page that you're going to do and work your way backwards. Well, thank you again, Peter, for another informative um, and action-based uh, workshop uh, where people have uh, now got the chance to go and um, take some action on their websites. And, and I think it gives a, a better understanding of what uh, uh, the tags mean and how to be able to um, change what they've 
currently got uh, or, or exists on their pages and how, how they can improve um, uh, those headings and subheadings. Um, I just want to remind um, uh, traders as well that um, if you've got a specific topic you'd like us to cover, then please email me at qbm at sbms.org.au. If there's uh, any questions um, you, that, that you, you've, um, you've got after this session, please send it through to me. And if you'd like a further mentoring session one-on-one, uh, -on -one, then also just let me know and uh, we can arrange that for you. So once again, thanks, Peter. Thank you, everyone, for, it, for you your attendance. Much. And uh, have a wonderful day and week. Thank you. Okay, bye for now. Yeah, bye.